In this program, I wanted to show you a few different features of vectors and then also how similar vectors are with strings and how you can use a lot of the same uh, functions uh, for both. And then I wanted to also give you a little bit of insight into how vectors and strings uh, manage the memory automatically when you're adding things to them. So this one has some functions. Let's kind of skip those for now and let's uh, go down to main. So in main we have a vector uh, that's a integer type that we're calling int vector and then we have a string uh, that we're calling string underscore example. Uh, make for sure that when you're using vector that you have the the pound sign include vector and then make for sure when you're using string you have the pound sign include string and then of course we have the include io stream uh, because we're doing the, the usual input and output. So we can check to see if a vector is empty by using this function. So this would be our int vector dot to show that we're going to use a function associated with that vector empty and then these functions always need these open close parentheses around them. So let's run it. We've declared the vector without putting anything in it so it should be empty. And so sure enough, it's empty. Now let's look into the, the memory management of it. This is not something that you would have to manage with the program, but if you're really trying to chase efficiency, um, it might be something that you would want to, to look at. So vector has this function dot capacity that shows uh, how much memory is reserved in advance uh, of the vector. And this is independent from size. Size is the number of elements that are in the vector. Capacity is the number of elements that could be put in the vector without going and grabbing new memory. So capacity is always um, equal to size or capacity is greater than size, but capacity could never be less than size. So with our empty vector, it has a capacity of zero and it has a size of zero. So let's do some pushbacks. So this is a for loop uh, just to push 10 values onto our, our vector. So after we push those 10 values onto our vector, let's run capacity and size again. So you can see with capacity, it's gone and grabbed a little bit of extra memory. So it has a capacity of 16, uh, but the size is only 10 because we only added 10 things to it. Now you could also resize. So this would be something where you're using a vector and you know that it's going to have to at least have a certain size. So let's say that we know that we're going to put at least 20 elements on here. So we could go ahead and resize it to 20. Now the vector has the 20 elements and the size is 20. We might not want to change the size of the vector though. We might not want to add those elements. We might just want to reserve a set of memory. So we've also got this statement, this dot reserve, and we could go and just reserve a big chunk of memory uh, so that when we run our program, it's not having to go grab more memory on the fly and continue to resize the vector. So you can see after using reserve, capacity is now 50, but the size is still the 20 that we did when we resized it. So um, for the programs that we're writing in class, we're, we're not ever going to be doing anything that's going to be so calculation intensive that you would need to do something like this. But if you get into some really hardcore simulations uh, where efficiency is just extremely important, um, then you might want to start looking into this idea of resizing and reserving. Um, to help your program use the memory more efficiently as you go through. Let's look at a few more uh, functions with vector. Um, so with vector, uh, just like we have push back, so that inserted something onto the back, you can also do pop back. And you can run it just like this, where it's in its own line, or you could store this back in a value. So you could take the value that's popped off and you could store it in another, another variable using an equal sign or an, uh, the assignment operator. Um, vector also has 
this insert operation. So it would be the name of your vector dot insert open close parentheses. And then you need to give it a location where you want to insert it. So typically you would start uh, at the beginning of the vector and add an offset or you would start at the end of the vector and subtract an offset. So you can see here with our vector after we did our insert we said go to the beginning of the vector and then go to 2. So we did beginning of the vector and go to 2. And then you can see 2 is where we inserted this value of 999. And instead of 999 you could have used a, a valid uh, a variable that had a, a number in it to insert that. And just wanted to show you, you can do kind of the same thing with uh, strings. So if we set our string equal to hello, then we can print the string out without a loop. And then you can also concatenate strings. So you can do a string is equal to itself plus world. And when we print it out, it'll print out then the, the two strings stuck together concatenated. We can also get out string size and capacity. So there's our string size is 11, capacity is 15. And then um, you can print a string just the same way that you would print a vector. So let's look at print it. Up here we had it set for a vector. But then down here we also have it overloaded. So it's the same function, just receiving a string. Note that this is a, a pass, just to, to continue to emphasize pass by reference or pass by value. This one would be a pass by value because we don't have the ampersand in front of the A. So this would be just sending a copy to the function. And then we're going to just print it element by element by using the name of our string and then the square brackets and then the I is the counter in our for loop. You can also use pushback with the string. So this would be pushing back uh, single characters. Notice when we push back, um, to push back a single character, you'd want to do a single quote so that you're adding a character element because the string is a, basically a vector. You could think of the string almost like a vector of characters. Uh, so with that same theme, we have to push back a character, not a, a string. And then you can also read off the ASCII characters if you want to from a string. You can do this by um, doing an individual value. So in this case, string example, and then in square brackets, we do the zero offset. So this would be our first uh, value in the string. So this would be the capital H. And then we just recast it as a different type. So this int in parentheses says, hey, don't put this as a character, recharacterize it as an integer, and the way that we recharacterize a character is by the ASCII value. So there, there's the ASCII value 72 that corresponds to the capital H. And sometimes you need to, to work with the ASCII values if you're doing a lot of text processing um, and things like that, um, If you're, particularly if you're doing um, uh, things like uh, uh, coding or encoding things, compressing things, um, simple uh, like the uh, ROT13 encoding uh, where you just rotate the letters by 13 to make it unreadable. Uh, just a, a, a simple, simple ciphers, things like that. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching.